ولا تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So carrying on then from where we left off last time in العقيدة الواسطية We got to the section where Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى had said أما بعد فهذا اعتقاد الفرقة الناجية المنصورة We were just talking about اعتقاد last time The عقيده That this is the عقيده of the saved sect The victorious and aided sect The عقيده we mentioned is That which you hold on to in your heart, that which you believe in, that which you tie your heart upon. That is the aqidah of a person. So now Shaykh al-Islam is going to talk about the aqidah of Ahlus Sunnah, the aqidah of the saved sect. The saved sect, We spoke about that briefly last time in the narration where the Prophet ﷺ said that if taraqat al-Yahud ala ihda aw thnatayni wa sab'ina firqah wa tafarraqat al-Nasara ala ihda aw thnatayni wa sab'ina firqah wa taftariq ummati ala thalathin wa sab'ina firqah that the Jews they split up into 71 or 72 sects and the Christians they split up into 71 or 72 sects and this ummah my ummah will split up into 73 sects in another version inna man qablakum min ahli al-kitab iftaraqu ala thnatayni wa sab'ina millah wa inna al-ummah ستفترق على ثلاث وسبعين اثنتان وسبعون في النار وواحدة في الجنة وهي الجماعة That those who came before you from the people of the book they split up into 72 sects and this ummah of Islam the Muslims will split up into 73 sects 72 of them in the fire and one of them in paradise and that one is the jama'ah and we're going to come shortly to look at what the jama'ah is it's mentioned in the narration though كُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا قَالُوا مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ That all of them are in the fire except one. So the companion said to the Prophet ﷺ, Who are they? Who is that one sect that will be saved from the fire? And so the Messenger ﷺ said, مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمُ أَصْحَابِي those who are upon the likes of what I am upon today and my companions. What I and my companions are upon today, those who are upon that way, then they are the saved sect. Also when it says here, Al-Mansura, the Aqidah of the saved sect, the aided sect, the sect, that is aided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ay, allati a'anaha subhanahu wa ayyadaha wa qawwaha ala man khalafaha wa'adaha. The 
victorious or the aided sect are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aided, has supported, has strengthened upon those who oppose them and those who have enmity against them. The Ta'ifa Mansurah, a Ta'ifa tul Mansurah, the supported and aided sect are those whom Allah has supported and strengthened against the ones who oppose them and have enmity against them. وَجَعَلَ الْعَاقِبَةَ لَهَا لِتَمَسُّكِهَا بِمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the good conclusion, the victory and the success for them, for that saved sect, because they clung on to the truth, they stuck to that which the messenger was upon, and what the companions were upon. كما في الصحيح من حديث المغيرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال Just like it's mentioned from the hadith of المغيرة that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم ظاهرون that they will not cease to be a group from amongst my ummah clear and apparent overriding upon that truth until the command of Allah comes and they are clear and apparent and upon that victory and success in following the Quran and the Sunnah following the methodology of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left us upon. وفي حديث جابر بن سمرة وجابر بن عبد الله أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال and in the hadith of Jabir ibn Samurah and Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق ظاهرين لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تقوم الساعة that they will not cease to be there will always be a group from my ummah who are apparent upon the truth they will remain upon that truth until the command of Allah comes or rather they will remain upon that truth. No one will harm them from those who oppose them. And they will not be able to do any harm to them or create any issue for them, any deceit against them that they overcome them. They will not be able to do so until the hour is established that Ahlul Sunnah, the people of truth, will remain apparent upon that truth till the day of judgment. And they will not be overridden and overwhelmed by those who oppose them. They will not be taken over and harmed by those who oppose them. Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala said, and other than him, هذه الطائفة هم أهل العلم. He said this group that is being spoken of, they are the people of knowledge. They are those who are upon knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the Quran, knowledge of the Sunnah, knowledge of that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Al-Imam Ahmed rahimahullahu ta'ala said, إِنْ لَمْ يَكُونُوا أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ فَلَا أَدْرِي مَنْ هُمْ Al-Imam Ahmed said regarding the saved sect, if they are not Ahlul Hadith, then I don't know who it is. 
And of course, Al-Imam Ahmad, when he said that, he is referring to Ahlul Hadith at that time, who were the Salafiyun, Ahlul Sunnah. Not talking about the Ahlul Hadith of our time now. Ahlul Hadith in the, the books of the scholars of old, they are talking about Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlu Sunnah, the Salafiyun. This was the name that they were known by in those days, Ahlul Hadith, because they follow the Hadith in reality, they follow the Sunnah in reality, not following their desires or following politics and following other Ikhwani ways as the people do today but call themselves Ahlul Hadith. Rather, this was the actual Ahlul Hadith of the time. Those who follow the hadith and follow the sunnah, Ahlu sunnah the Salafiyun. Yazid ibn Harun, he said the same. Qala al-Qadi Iyad, al-Qadi Iyad said, Innama arada Ahmed Ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah, wa man ya'taqidu madhhaba ahli al-hadith, he said that Al Imam Ahmed, what he intended was Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. When he said Ahlu al Hadith, he intended by that Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Women ya'taqidu madhhaba Ahl al Hadith, and those who had the aqeedah or the, the belief upon the methodology of the people of Hadith meaning the people of Sunnah, the people who are upon the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَفِيهِ أَعْظَمُ So when you examine this now, and you look at these narrations, within it is a great glad tidings, the greatest glad tidings, because within it, it is telling you, أَنَّ الْحَقِّ لَا يَزُولُ بِالْكُلِّيَّةِ That the truth will not disappear completely. There will not come a time when the truth disappears absolutely. They may be small, the numbers of Ahlul Sunnah. They may be small, the numbers who are upon that pure methodology of the Prophet wasallam, the Ahlul Sunnah, the al firqatul Najiyah, At-Ta'ifatu Al-Mansura. They may be small in numbers, but they will not disappear. The truth will not completely be eradicated and gone and disappeared. Rather, the glad tidings is there in these narrations that the truth will remain and will continue till the end of time. And those who are upon that truth will remain and continue till the end of time. وَفِيهِ مُعْجِزَ ظَاهِرَ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَزَلْ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ هَذَا الْوَصْفِ بَاقِيًا وَلَا يزال. And this is a sign from the miracles of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Because now already there's been 1,400 years gone by since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And throughout the 1,400 years, Ahlul Sunnah remain. And the truth has remained. Throughout the different ages and the different times, the different places, the truth continues. The truth remains. It has not been the case that the truth has been lost and that Ahlul Sunnah have disappeared and that they have finished. That has not occurred and it will not occur. So this is a miracle in of itself. Now it shows the truth has remained and continues to remain and Ahlul Sunnah remain. The scholars of Ahlul Sunnah remain. So do not be worried about numbers. Do not be worried if you see that Ahlul Sunnah are small in number, and you see that Ahlul Bid'ah are great in number, 
That is not the point to take. The point is not about numbers. Rather, the point is that the truth will remain and it will continue and it will be up until the day of judgment. Al-Ta'ifatul Mansura, the aided and supported sect, Al-Firqatul Najiyah, the saved sect. All of this continues and it will not be wiped out. So take glad tidings from that. Glad tidings from that. That Ahlul Sunnah will continue and remain. The truth continues and remains. And do not be worried if you are small in number. And the people of innovation are great in number. The truth is what remains. Falsehood disappears. What is for Allah remains. And what is not from the desires and the innovations and those affairs, they will not remain. And they will not overtake the truth. So, this is a glad tidings for Ahlul Sunnah. وَهَذَا سُنَّةُ اللَّهِ فِي خَلْقِهِ أَنَّهُ يَنْصُرُ عِبَادَهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his decree that he aids the believing servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids the believing servants, aids the mu'minun and is in the support and the defense of the mu'minun. An example of that, أَهْلَكَ اللَّهُ قوم نوح وعاد وثمود وأشباههم ممن كذب الرسل وأنجى عباده المؤمنين If you look at the history of the prophets and the messengers and you look at the stories of the prophets how those people who opposed their messengers how they were destroyed by the command of Allah and how the believers, even though they may have been small in number compared to the disbelievers, the believers were saved by Allah. And the disbelievers, even though large in number, were destroyed. They were destroyed, like in the example of Nuh alayhi salam, that the floods they came. And they destroyed all of those disbelievers, all of those who opposed the Messenger Nuh alayhi salam, opposed the mission that Allah had sent, they were all destroyed. You look at the example of Musa alayhi salam, Pharaoh, the tyrannical ruler, with all of his strength and power, yet he was destroyed and drowned, he and his people. And Musa alayhi salam was saved. And this is the way that you see throughout history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids those who are upon the truth. Allah aids those who are following the revelation that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and left behind. Regarding this point then also. Regarding al firqatun Najiyah and Al-Mansurah, Al-Najiyah, Al-Shaykh Al-Ithaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala says, the meaning of the saved sect, Al-Firqatun Najiyah, is Najiyah fi dunya min al-bida'i salimah minha, wa Najiyah, في الآخرة من النار. That the saved sect are saved in two ways. One way in this world and one way in the afterlife. They are saved in this world from the misguidances and innovations. They are saved from misguidances and innovations and deviations away from as-sirat al-mustaqim. They are saved from all of that and kept upon the straight path. Then in the afterlife, they are saved too. 
in the afterlife they are saved from the hellfire. They are saved from the hellfire and placed into paradise. So al najiyah the saved sect, they are saved in this world, away from the deviations and innovations and misguidances and kept upon the straight path. And they are saved in the afterlife by being saved from the hellfire. That is al najiyah the saved sect. Similarly, Al-Mansurah, Al-Mansurah, the sect, those who are aided and are supported and are given victory by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this will continue to be the case up until the hour is established, up until the day of judgment. إلى قيام الساعة أي إلى يوم القيامة فهي منصورة إلى قيام الساعة So أهل السنة will remain as the saved sect, as the victorious sect aided by Allah سبحانه وتعالى up until the establishment of the hour. However, However, there is an issue here, a problem that some people may come across. And that problem that some people may come across is that it is mentioned in a narration that the command of Allah or the day of judgment will not be established until only the worst of the people are left upon the earth. It mentions here, هُنَا يَرِدُ إِشْكَالْ وَهُوَ أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ أَخْبَرَ بِأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ تَقُومُ عَلَى شِرَارِ الْخَلْقِ the Prophet ﷺ said that the hour when it's actually established will be upon the worst of the people. The good people will be gone then. Just the worst and the evil of the people will be left when the hour occurs. In a narration, in another narration it says, وَأَنَّهَا لَا تَقُومُ حَتَّى لَا يُقَالْ Allah, Allah, That the hour will not be established until... The people don't even say Allah, Allah anymore. They've forgotten the name of Allah. Nobody remembers Allah, meaning the worst of the people are left. So these narrations indicate that the day of judgment occurring will occur when only the worst of the people are left upon the earth. Yet here we are saying... That al Najiyah, Al-Ta'ifatul Mansura, La Tazal, they will continue Hatta Taquma Sa'a until the hour is established, they will remain. So, how do we combine between those narrations? Some saying that Ahlus Sunnah will remain all the way till the establishment of the hour. But other narrations saying when the hour is established, it's only going to be the worst of the people left. Meaning Ahlul Sunnah will be gone. So how do we combine between those narrations? How do we understand those narrations? The scholars have said, the way to understand them is that Ahlul Sunnah will remain up until the end of time, just before the hour is established. Because just before the hour is established, then all of the righteous, their souls are taken, until only the evil ones are left, and then the hour is established upon them. As Shaykh al says, الجواب أن يقال إن المراد إلى قرب قيام الساعة 
that the meaning is they will remain up until just before the establishment of the hour. لِقَوْلِهِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ أَوْ إِلَى قِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ أَيْ سَاعَتُهُمْ وَهُوَ مَوْتُهُمْ لِأَنَّ مَنْ مَاتَ فَقَدْ قَامَتْ قِيَامَتُهُ لكن الأول أقرب فهم منصورون إلى قرب قيام الساعة وإنما لجأنا إلى هذا التأويل لدليل والتأويل بدليل جائز لأن الكل من عند الله So even though the narrations are saying that they will remain till the end but the others are saying it's only going to be the evil people when the hour happens how do we understand it? We could say that the meaning is they will remain to just before the hour and then their souls are taken and only the evil are left and then the hour is established or it could mean that they remain up until the time of their death because when you die your judgment has begun but the reality is the first meaning that they will remain up to just before the establishment of the hour. Then they will be removed. So then only the evil people will be left on the earth and the hour is established upon them. So that interpretation is correct because there are evidences in the sunnah which indicate that, indicate how the righteous, their souls are taken just before the end of time and then the evil are left only and then the hour is established upon them then shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah says ila qiyam al-sa'ah or rather from the beginning of it fahadha i'tiqadu al-firqati al-najiyat al-mansurati ila qiyam al-sa'ah ahli sunnati wal-jama'ah now he mentions Ahli Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. And of course, Ahli Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, they are Al Firqatul Najiyah, they are Al Ta'ifatul Mansura, they are Ahlul Hadith, as Al Imam Ahmed said, they are the Salafiyun. All of these are names for Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And all of these names indicate the same thing. Ahlu Sunnah, Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, Al Firqatul Najiyah, Al Ta'ifatul Mansura, Ahlul Hadith, Ahlul Athar. All of those titles indicate the same thing. Those who are upon what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and what his companions were upon. مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمِ وَأَصْحَابِي What I am upon today and my companions. So those who are upon what he was upon and what his companions were upon, then they are الْفِرْقَةُ النَّاجِيَةِ They are الطَّائِفَةُ الْمَنْصُورَةِ They are أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ They are أَهْلُ الْأَثَرِ they are Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. That's the names for the same thing. So Ahlu Sunnah, Ahl, Yani Al Muhtasuna Wal Mutamasikuna Biha Wal Mu'tanuna Bidira Satiha Wa Fahmiha. That Ahlu Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah, those who cling on to the sunnah and they give importance to the sunnah and they learn the sunnah they study the sunnah the little of it and the large of it meaning all of that sunnah they look into it they study it they learn it they memorize it they practice it they cling on to it all of that sunnah they are ahlu sunnah as for a person who does not cling on to the sunnah, a person who is upon bid'ah, then how can it be said that he is ahl sunnah? Ahl sunnah, the ahl, meaning those who are specified with that thing. Specified with what? 
specified with the sunnah, that they learn the sunnah, they practice the sunnah, they cling on to the sunnah, they are ahlu sunnah. As for a person or a people who do not cling on to the sunnah, they are upon bid'ah, they are upon all types of deviated celebrations, the birthday of the Prophet and whatever else, all of the innovations and deviations they do, then they are not clinging on to the sunnah, they are not learning and practicing the sunnah as it should be. So how can it be said they are Ahlus sunnah? Ahlus sunnah are those who truly learn and practice and cling on to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then also, wal jama'ah. Ahlus sunnah wal jama'ah. Al jama'ah, al jama'ah meaning that group united, united together. Al jama'ah, united together. How? By the sunnah. All of them united together upon the sunnah. Ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. And this is the opposite of. Ahlu al bid'ah or Ahlu al ahwa wal furqa. You have Ahlu al sunnah wal jama'ah and you have Ahlu al bid'ah wal furqa. Ahlu al sunnah, those who cling to the sunnah and they are united upon that. Ahlu al sunnah wal jama'ah. And then on the other side of the table you have Ahlul Bida'ah, those who are clinging on to innovations and deviations, while Furqa, and they are split up. They are upon innovations and split up in that. All types of innovations, all types of different methodologies, different pathways, different things that they do. They're not united upon one Bida'ah. Multiple bid'ah here, there, everywhere, different opinions. So they are the people of bid'ah who are split up. Whereas we are the people of the sunnah who are united. You see the difference? Ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. The people of the sunnah who are united upon it. As opposed to the people of bid'ah who are split up over it. Split up in different bid'ah, different deviations, in different methodologies and different pathways. So, al jamaah lughatan al firqa min al nas. Linguistically, it means a group of people, the jamaah. And when we talk about the jamaah being united upon the sunnah, at the head of all of the jamaah, at the head of the jamaah are. The Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wal muradu bihim huna ashabu nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmil qiyamah. The meaning of the jama'ah at the head of them is the companions. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa qad takatharati al-adillah. في الحث على لزوم الجماعة فروى الترمذي عن ابن عباس مرفوعا إن يد الله على الجماعة and there are many narrations that encourage us to stick to the jama'a to stick to the way of the companions many narrations that tell us about that being united upon the sunnah being united upon the way of the companions. And an example of it is that which is reported in a tirmidhi from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma from the Prophet inna yada Allahi ala al jama'ah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said indeed the hand of Allah is upon the jama'ah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his aid and victory is for the jama'ah. The hand of Allah is upon the jama'ah. 
and also in another narration of Abu Dhar, alaykum bil jama'ah, upon you is to cling to the jama'ah, to be upon the way of the companions, be united upon the sunnah, inna allaha lam yajma' ummati illa ala huda, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not unite my ummah, except upon guidance. So those who are united are united upon the truth. Ahlu Sunnah united upon the truth. And that's why when it comes to the people of innovation, as we said, you see, they are not united. They are not united upon one way. All of them with their different methodologies, different sheikh that each, ah, each one follows, different methodology, different uh, 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 people, different ways, different innovations, they are all split up amongst themselves. Whereas Ahlu Sunnah, united upon the truth, united upon the methodology of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions, radiallahu anhum. It is also mentioned from some of the narrations and from of the salaf, from the scholars, that we have been commanded to stick to the jama'ah. Ja' al amr biluzum al jama'ah. Fa inna al murada biha luzum al haq. That the point of clinging to the jama'ah is clinging to the Truth, وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمُتَمَسِّكْ بِهِ قَلِيلًا وَالْمُخَالِفْ لَهُ كَثِيرًا Even if those who are clinging to that truth are small in number, and those who are opposing it are large, even if you cling on to the jama'ah, you cling on to the truth, regardless of your numbers being small, and the opposers being large. لِأَنَّ الْحَقِّ هُوَ الَّذِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْجَمَاعَةِ الْأُولَى مِنْ أَهْدِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَلَا نَظَرَ إِلَى كَثْرَةِ أَهْلِ الْبَاطِ الْبَعْدَهُمْ Because the jama'ah, the root of the jama'ah, the original jama'ah, is the, like we just said, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is the root of the jama'ah. So that is what we follow. They are the ones we follow upon the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the salaf. After them, it doesn't matter how big the numbers of the opposers are. Doesn't matter how big their gatherings are. They come and tell you, look at the conference we had. 10,000 people in our conference. It doesn't matter about numbers of groups that they have after the Sahaba. The Sahaba are the Jama'ah. They were upon the truth. That's what we cling on to and carry on with, regardless of the numbers of the people after the Sahaba opposing the way of the Sahaba. وَقَالَ مَيْمُونَ ibn Mahran, قَالَ ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه that Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه said, الجماعه ما وافق الحق وان كنت وحدك that the jama'ah is that which is in conformity agreement with the truth even if you were by yourself even if you were by yourself if you are upon the truth and clinging to the truth clinging to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions radiallahu anhum, then you are upon the jama'ah. You are with the jama'ah. Even if you were by yourself and everybody else is opposing you. Nu'aym ibn Hamad said, إِذَا فَسَدَتِ الْجَمَاعَةِ فَعَلَيْكَ بما كانت عليه الجماعة قبل أن تفسد وإن كنت وحدك فإنك أنت الجماعة حينئذ. He said, 
If the jama'a becomes corrupt, meaning the people afterwards in their great numbers, in their groups, in their so-called jama'a, actually oppose the original jama'a, the jama'a of the truth of the sahaba, if these other so-called jama'at, the jama'as, they go against the truth, they become corrupt, then what do you do? Upon you is to cling on to the jama'a, what they were upon before they went corrupt. Before these people of innovation came about with their false jama'a, stick to that which was before it. And that which was before it at the beginning was the jama'a of the companions. Forget about the corruption which has occurred amongst the people and their so-called jama'a. Stick to the original jama'a, the jama'a of the companions and the jama'a which is upon the truth even if you be by yourself. Ibn al-Qayyim Rahimahullahu ta'ala mentioned in A'lam al-Waqi'in وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْإِجْمَاعْ وَالْحُجَّةْ وَالسَّوَادُ الْأَعْظَمْ هُوَ الْعَالِمْ صَاحِبُ الْحَقِّ وَإِنْ كَانَ وَحْدَهُ Know that the ijma' the, the unity or consensus or the group and the hujjah, the evidence and as-sawadu al-a'zam, the, the great number, is all within a scholar, a person who follows the truth, even if he is by himself. He is the one considered as the masses. He is the one that represents all the masses in truth, even if the masses of people actually are opposing him. He is the one that represents the truth, he is the one that is clinging on to the truth. He is the jama'a. He is the proof. Even if he be by himself. Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned that. وَإِنْ خَالَفَهُ أَهْلُ الْأَرْضِ Even if all of the people of the earth oppose him. Even if all of the people of the earth oppose him. وَقَدْ شَذَّ النَّاسُ كُلُّهُمْ زَمَنُ الْإِمَامِ أَحْمَدْ ابْنِ حَنْبَلْ an example, at the time of Al-Imam Ahmed, the masses of the people, all of them, they went against the truth. They went upon the false aqidah, the deviated aqidah regarding various affairs from the creation of the Quran and other than that. The majority, many of them, they went upon that way leaving Al-Imam Ahmed and a handful upon the truth. So then those few, Al-Imam Ahmed and the few who remained, they are the jama'a, not the majority who went against them. Al-Imam Ahmed and those who were with him, they are the jama'a, not those who went uh, against him. Even though those who went against him, from amongst them, there were the fuqaha of the time, some of them. Fuqaha of the time, but they went upon that deviance, upon the incorrect aqidah. And the leaders of the time went upon that way. So that is not to be followed. Al-Imam Ahmed is the jama'a in that situation still. He and those who are upon the truth with him. Al-Imam Ahmed wahdahu huwa al-jama'a. He was the jama'a himself in that case then. And it's mentioned, لَمَّا لَمْ يَتَحَمَّلْ هَذَا عُقُولُ النَّاسِ When the people couldn't understand that. They couldn't understand how all the majority and the masses of the people are on one side and Al-Imam Ahmed by himself with a handful on the other side. Their minds couldn't understand that. They said to the leader at the time, يا أمير المؤمنين تكون أنت وقضاتك وولاتك والفقهاء والمفتي والمفتون كلهم على الباطل وأحمد وحده على الحق 
They said, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, you and your judges and your rulers and your fuqaha and the ones who give fatwa, the muftis, all of you are upon falsehood and just Ahmed by himself is upon the truth. فَلَمْ يَتَّسِعْ عِلْمَهُ لِذَلِكَ So his mind couldn't understand that. How can it be that me and all of these people with me, we're all wrong and just Ahmed and a few with him are right? فَأَخَذَاهُ بِالصِّيَاطِ وَالْعُقُوبَ بَعْدَ الْحَبْسِ الطَّوِيلِ So then the leader at the time uh, punished Al-Imam Ahmed, imprisoned him and beat him and punished him. فَلَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ مَا أَشْبَهَ اللَّيْلَ بِالْبَارِحَةِ وَهِيَ السَّبِيلُ الْمُهِيَعْ لِأَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ حَتَّى يَلْقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ مَضَ عَلَيْهَ سَلَفُهُمْ وَيَنْتَظِرُهَا خَلَفُهُمْ so this is how it is, just like it occurred to Al-Imam Ahmed then, it occurs to Ahlul Sunnah now, that Ahlul Sunnah will be small in numbers in many places, and the opposers will be great in numbers against them in many places. But the point is the truth that is being clung on to. You cling on to the truth even if you be alone. So then, as Shaykh al said regarding it, regarding Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they are known as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah because they do not split up like the people of innovation and deviance split up, like the uh, Jahmiya are split up. And the Mu'tazila are split up, and the Rawafid are split up, and other groups from the people of innovation are all split up. Even though you might think they are all united, and they are together inside and deep down upon their beliefs and their ways, they are all split up, all of them following different ways, different ideas, different intellects, because they follow their desires. They are not united upon one way. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah, they are Mujtami'una ala Sunnah. Fahum Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlul Sunnah, they are united upon the Sunnah. That's why they are known as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Uh, and this title of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is not a title which can be used by anyone else besides those who are truly upon the way of the Salaf. They are truly Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Many people these days claim to be Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The Sufiya, many of the sects of the Sufiya, they say they are Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And the reality is they are not. Because the only people whom this title is applicable to are the ones who are genuinely clinging on to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Genuinely clinging on to the way of the salaf. But as for all these other groups, they do not. They may claim it. But when you come to the way of the salaf and you show them that the salaf never did these things you are doing, the Salaf never encouraged demonstrations and rioting and rebelling against the rulers and other types of affairs. The Salaf never encouraged working with and praising the people of innovation. When you give them the methodology of the Salaf, then it becomes clear that they are not upon the methodology of the Salaf. So this title is only applicable to those who are truly upon what the narration said. Ma ana alayhi yawm wa ashabi what i am upon today and my companions and ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah they are the ones who are upon what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was upon and what his companions were upon then after that shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah starts explaining this aqeedah of ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah he said, this is the aqidah of the saved sect, the victorious sect, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. 
So what is that aqidah? That's what he's going to begin with now. To start explaining the aqidah of the saved sect. To start explaining the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah 